Hey everyone, TJ Alds, I-45 now. We're glad to have you along. We're in the kitchen, the Culinary Arts Center at Galveston College. By the way, Galveston College, happy 50th birthday to you. And you may recognize this young lady. Yes, it is the Nana Chef, Nancy Manlove, one of our favorite folks in the whole world and obviously our favorite chef. Nancy, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Now, the reason Nancy is here is you know, we know Nancy from Cutthroat Kitchen. We know her from all the stories we've done around here. You know, the retired NASA engineer who became a chef and it was world famous now uh, all over but now some big news Food Network gave you a phone call tell us a story Food Network star you're going to be on the show that's their that's their biggest show tell us about that yeah it's 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 a once in a lifetime opportunity but I, I'll take the opportunity and make the best of it um, it's it's it, uh, totally unexpected that I would get called to be in this season uh, I'm blessed to be in it and just got to learn to open those doors and take those risks and put yourself out there. Um, I was in an antique store in Texas City when I got a notice from New York to uh, ask me if I was interested in being in this season, and I went, yeah, right, sure, uh-huh, okay. Do you, think, serious. He do you think it was a prank? Serious. I, I wasn't sure, you know, I wasn't sure if it was, it was a hoax or, but I come to find out it was someone in the upper management of the Food Network, and he was serious, dead serious. So um, he said, I said, well, I'd love to do that, but I'm not auditioning, uh, because I've been down that road before. Right. <laughs> and he said, no, you don't have to audition. You just need to fill out the legalities and, and stuff, because we want you there, because we think you've got something. So I said, well, thank you. So When he said you think we, you got something, what was it about you think attracted them to you to the show well, you know I think it's several things it was the fact that I'm I'm a person that says it you're it's you're never too old to do something to reinvent yourself perfect example of leaving the space program uh, as an engineer support person <laughs> right yeah right yeah. Not an engineer. Your correction yeah <laughs> thanks I appreciate that um, but, um, you know, I always love food. I always love being around food. I, I always cook for my family. Everybody come to my house for Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever, uh, special dinners. I used to hold, host a lot of parties. But uh, I always wanted to be a home economics teacher. They love the fact that I had a neat story, uh, that I was of age, uh, oldest in the group. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Wisest of the group. <laughs> but... Um, um, I, they liked my story. They knew that I could cook. They could tell from my social media. They knew me from, from Cutthroat Kitchen. So I kind of had a, a nice chew in because once you get in the Food Network family, you are family. And, and then, yeah, and, and that's been like a family because there's a lot of connections you have made through not just when you were on Cutthroat Kitchen, not once, but twice, by the way. Right. Including one time she was in a yellow submarine. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And the Bay but, of Pigs. Uh, yeah, the Bay of Pigs. <laughs> I forgot about the Bay of Pigs. Uh, but also just that extended, when you go to appearances or you go to shows, folks who've had that similar, and and you have, and your network has just grown oh, through absolutely. this, hasn't it? You know, I had a, a huge network of, of uh, immediate foodie friends from all over America. It started with the Real Women of Philadelphia. My whole life changed around cream cheese seven years ago. I uh, entered a recipe contest and won $250. I thought that was the biggest thing in my life. <laughs> and um, I've never stopped since then. Uh, when I left uh, the space shuttle program, uh, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. Saw an ad in the Galveston paper. I came to Galveston College to talk to Paul Mendoza, my uh, head chef instructor here at Galveston College. And when I walked in this lab, I knew I was home. And speaking of Paul, remember he's with us. And Paul, come on over here. In fact, because as one of the great programs here at Galveston College is this culinary arts uh, program. Paul, yeah. come on over here next to me. Uh, will you? This is uh, Paul Mendoza. Uh, and when they and uh, 12 years ago was it that you uh, that you started up with this program, really? And uh, and she was one of your students. Can we say she was a star student? Oh, definitely, definitely. She did. She knew her way around the kitchen before she ever came here. We just taught her a few tricks. Absolutely. Uh, Many do you, tricks. Do you expect what you're seeing from her now when she was a student of yours here? No, only because we just have never had that here. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that was 
totally unexpected. Yeah, it's so I'm popular. I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it's so popular, by the way, is that they put her up on a billboard. That's how proud of her right. she is. Right. How, just talk about the program over here. I mean, obviously, because Galveston is such a tourist community, you have the hotel, restaurant, and, and restaurant community here that's big. That's why this was needed. That's what community colleges do is, is meet a need. Talk about the growth of this program, because you come from the industry and then came on over here to become the, 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 the man who runs the show. Right, right. We have now uh, evolved the program to a sort of a stack credential, so students can come in and earn a one semester certificate, the very entry level. Uh, they can then continue on for a couple of more semesters and earn a one year certificate, and then continue on to get an associate's degree. So we try to cover you know, different requirements for people. Um, we have good associations with all the different restaurants in town as well as on the mainland for students to do internships. Uh, we do lots of community outreach programs where we are involved in you know, uh, shrimp festival, the food and wine festival, Epicurean evenings, things like that. So we try to expose the students to uh, you know, their, pers their prospective employers uh, in the future. So. Uh, Anyway, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, it's, it's kind of an integrated thing. It's not just some cooking class you go to some schools and get. This is the real deal so you can make a career out of it. And, I, and Nancy, when you came over here, was that the idea? Was to make it into a career? or well, I had many choices. I could have gone to Houston. I could have gone to another local community college. But I just found Galveston so inviting. And I came down and and looked at everything, talked to Paul extensively, probably talked his ear off that one day. Um, I, didn't think, I, I, I didn't think I'd ever shut up. I know Paul didn't think I'd ever shut up. <laughs> but um, um, I just found Galveston to be the place I wanted to go. And you, and you haven't looked back since, I, have you? You know, I did not come in here with aspirations of being on the Food Network, ever, 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 ever. As a matter of fact, being the oldest student in the classroom, we had, uh, several young wannabes that said, oh, I'm going to get my own show on the Food Network. I said, honey, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. You're going to have to eat a lot more beans. <laughs> and you're going to have to cook a lot more beans. <laughs> That's something else. Well, and how was he as an instructor, by the way? Uh, absolutely awesome. He was, he was always willing to listen, always willing to inspire, and he did inspire uh, all of us. Um, down to earth, approachable. A great mentor, you know, and uh, I, I love him to death. We stay in touch all the time. And you know, if I can help him in any way, I do. I serve on the advisory council here great. for uh, the Culinary Arts Department. And I believe there's a big seminar symposium coming, right? Yeah, the conference on Monday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. on right, at, right after the yeah. show debuts, you're going to have a exactly. conference. That's exactly. great. Exactly. That's, that is, that's right. It does debut on the Food Network. Sunday, June the 4th, episode one. Okay. And we can't reveal any of the secrets from that. Yeah, Nancy's, she can't tell us anything from that, except no. that she's on the show. That's it. Correct. Paul, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it, sure. partner. And uh, congrats to you and your work on you. Yeah, that's great. So, well, having you on here and obviously being here, this is not props, folks. We're actually going to enjoy ourselves. We are. I, I'm sorry you can't enjoy this because this is all smelling wonderfully and we haven't even gotten going yet. So, you've. Uh, we're going to bring Oscar. Speaking of the Culinary Arts Program here, we have Oscar here who's going to be your sous chef. He's in his first year uh, here. Uh, Oscar is also, by the way, is a, a Galveston native and yes. worked around. So we're glad to have you here, Oscar. Thanks for thanks, joining thanks, us. Thanks, uh, thanks, so, thanks. so Nancy, tell us what we're going to be doing here today. Well, I'm going to make one of my signature seafood dishes. We've got some uh, uh, local shrimp and some scallops and crab that's going to go into a, what I call a, a, a flan mousseline. Uh, it, we're going to cook it in a water bath. Uh, in the oven and then I'm going to top it with an exceptional bisque sauce that I've created over the years and crown it with some wonderful lump crab meat. It's going to make you drool when you see it. I'm, I'm <laughs> drooling with just you explaining it here and reading over the recipe. We'll have it up a link to get the recipe from Nancy here in a little bit. All right, well, let's get, get going here. Okay. Show us what we got to okay. do to prep up things first. Well, Oscar's got a few assignments. I'm going to have him chop me up some, uh, mince me up some shallots. I'm working on it. And two cloves of garlic, okay? Mince, finely minced. 
I'm going to continue conca saying. This is a technique that I learned. You know, even being a, a great home cook, you don't know it all. If you think you do, then you need to think again because there's a big difference in technique at home. I have to train myself how to cut with a knife and because uh, I did not know the correct way to, to use a knife. I had no knife skills. It was just what I had been taught as a teenage bride from my mother and what you pick up over the years, you know? So what I'm doing is a concasse of the Roma tomato, making an X in the, in the, in the pointed end. We're going to drop it in hot water for about 10 seconds, let it loosen up uh, the, uh, the skins, and then we're going to peel the skins off the seed and dice the tomatoes. So that's our next step. All right, as you're working on that, I'll ask you a couple questions. Because as sure. we talked about just in kind of your intro uh, here earlier, uh, it, that your career, 12 years, you worked for the United Space Alliance, International Space Station, as well as the shuttle program. And you can head on over as, we, as I'm okay. chatting with you here. Sure. Um, and tell us about how you got into that field <laughs> to begin with. Because that, that, it's not like that's an everyday, hey, I'm just going to get up today and go to work on the space shuttle. No, you know, <laughs> but I, you know, I had spent, uh, uh, I had actually spent 25 years prior to that in corporate America. Uh, that was just my last corporate America job. Uh, I was very fortunate to get on with Boeing when they needed someone. And I, you know, I started out as an administrative assistant. You get your foot in the door and you go from there. Right. And uh, uh, did travel and did engineering support. And, and then, I got, I, then I got good. Then I got real good. <laughs> Then I transferred over to the United Space Alliance on the uh, International Pro Space, Pro Space Station program. And then when Columbia went down, um, they formed a team to go up to do the debris recovery. Well, I was really good at database administration. And they sent me up to Lufkin, and I sat in a vault with 15 other people just working the purging of the database of all the debris fill very humbling I still get my, my skin is crawling right now I still get chill bumps every time I talk about it uh, probably the most humbling thing I've ever done in my life uh, to see what was in that database but anyway uh, my compasse is just about almost there, there right Thank you, Paul. <laughs> it's Paul off from <laughs> off camera here. Yeah, always the always the diligent uh, 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 instructor, isn't he? I'm gonna he? grab this ice bucket. And um, you know, we weren't flying. The shuttle stopped flying right. when Columbia went down, and it took us almost two years to get back into into launch again. And um, then they needed more people on space shuttle program so off to the space shuttle program I went and spent 12 years uh, between Boeing and United Space Alliance but I also retired from Houston Lighting and Power <laughs> <laughs> before that I taught customer service I work in economic development I answered the Marvin Zindler reports the PUC commit reports and the customer satisfaction uh, Talk about, I mean because working in that I would think as you go into this industry, uh, in the in the food service industry, that's got to be a big a big part of that is customer service. It's not just yes. preparing great food. You've got to know right. how to treat the customer. So I would yeah. think that that skill set is going to come in handy yeah. over the years. Yeah, everywhere I went, it led me to my next career. You pick up skills and talents and skill sets that you can apply later in life and you know but I was always involved around food you know when we had an office party they'd go Nancy what were you what you gonna bring what you gonna bring so I wrote a cookbook at the light company it was called what's cooking and it was employee uh, recipes you know the type that you you buy from fundraisers and stuff and it became a fundraiser for the Houston Food Bank well when I went to United Space Alliance I was a program director for the board of directors for the Leadership Association, and we wrote a cookbook. <laughs> it had everything in there from the astronauts to the janitorial service, employee level. They, everybody got to contribute. We had over a thousand recipes. And um, we raised money for the Houston Food Bank. <laughs> 
and I put on an epic carrying and I was always putting on dinners for the leadership organization. So I've always been around Yeah, food. you were always already and, doing and, you know, this. I yeah. always kept migrating back here because, like, I, I don't know if I said earlier, but if I haven't, I wanted to be a home economics teacher. Right. And at 19, I was a young bride. And instead, I, you know, I found myself married, starting a family, and then home economics kind of went away. Right. It became health and life sciences or uh, some other program that they really didn't teach everything that I knew that they used to teach in home ec. You know, teaching you to sew and crochet and knit and cook, you know? Right. Yeah. So then I thought I'd, I'd be a co-op person at the light company. but that went by its wayside. So, you know, I sold insurance for a, a little bit. I was the director of membership services here at the Galveston Chamber of Commerce for three years, award-winning years, and the executive director for the Downtown Merchants Association. What else did I do? At the telephone company, I worked at the telephone company before I went to the light company. <laughs> I started out as my first job, my first real job was an operator on long distance when it was cord board operator me I oh my you. goodness <laughs> and then we went to new technology and all those jobs went away so I went out in the field and became an installer repair technician I actually climbed telephone poles for a living this is an interesting part because that, <laughs> that that's the part I wanted to get to with that that I was going to ask you about it anyway but you know climbing up telephone pole to install stuff you know how do you how does that compare to what you do now <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a chef you know, I loved it then, but I was like 27 years old, so I was in great shape. I was very athletic, um, but I love this better. <laughs> I would think so. <laughs> Speaking of loving it better, why don't you go ahead and go with okay, our next steps okay. here so we don't hold it up so, too much. What we're going to do is let's just start peeling these. See how easy this skin comes off, folks? Look at that. Don't torment yourself in the kitchen. Cut them right down the quarter score them or thinly slice into the skin and you can peel them so delicately but so easy yes please and then when we when we get them uh, peeled um, well let's just put it on the board what we're going to do cut one in off cut them in quarters Come here, scoop that out with your knife blade, and then we're going to dice each quarter into small pieces. Okay, so we get everybody can see a little bit better. We'll just move that out of the way. And this is what we're looking for, a nice, did I pass? Chef Paul did a pass. <laughs> Paul, Paul is watching intently <laughs> over there. Did I do it right? Looks great. Okay, thank you. And, uh, and speaking of the program over here, let's bring in Yark, our, our, our second uh, uh, sous chef will be happy. Yark, come on, step on in here. And, uh, and Yark, now uh, we talked about Oscar being from Galveston. Yark, where are you from originally? I'm from Ukraine. Ukraine? Eastern Europe. So how long you been in the program now? Uh, I finished the first year. Hopefully I got the second certificate that Chef Paul been talking about. There you go. All right, we'll have you step in here and help out, and I'll step out and watch this. Grace, uh, now you were telling me, the, how is this called again, That what you're doing here? Concasset. with the, Concasset. And You said French, you didn't even know what that was no, and, w when you got no. here. No. Uh, it's a French technique. Is that correct, Chef Paul? Uh, that's been around for centuries. Um, and God, I don't know how many times I've done this. When I pulled my internship out at Moody Gardens, we did this all the time. <laughs> and talk a little bit about that, that out of Moody Gardens, oh. that experience oh, out fabulous. there. Um, you know, I you know I, I went out there at the ripe age of um, 61 and uh, asked Chef uh, Orr Schmidt if I could be an intern. I wanted to specialize in garmage, which is the cold side of the house, uh, but certainly not all cold. A sandwich, salad, um, but in entails um, charcuterie, sausage making, cheese making, uh, not for the faint of heart. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We do a lot of animal. I ended up doing a, a lot of prep work. 
uh, grilled a lot of things, um, built sandwiches till I thought I would die. It's paying your dues, though. I mean, that's what <laughs> that's what it's all yeah. about, right? But Chef Ors um, gave me a chance. He said, I don't understand why you're here. We're all trying to get out of here. You're trying to get in. <laughs> but I'm going to give you a chance. <laughs> And um, he was very, very pleased with my performance. And he kept me on And after the internship. And then I ended up at Shern's, the uh, fine dining restaurant on the ninth floor at Moody Gardens. Loved it there. Absolutely loved it. But when Orr's retired, I left too and became a personal chef for a while. Had a lot of catering gigs. And um, today, I am chef de cuisine at a restaurant in Kima that is called Eculent with a little e and it, f it features a 20 course meal right now uh, one seating 16 seats in the whole restaurant and we do modern farm to table with a touch of molecular right and yeah. tell a little bit because David Skinner the uh, yeah David I, Skinner is my executive chef a wonderful person and a wonderful cook very creative a creative genius in my book and uh, he has this laboratory that he goes out and becomes a mad scientist for a while and comes back and says, I think we're gonna serve this on the new menu. And there is a new menu coming. But right now he's in the James Beard Foundation blend, the blended burger uh, project and he needs votes, okay? The top five chefs, and there's 140 of them across America that is competing in this. They have to have a restaurant in order to compete. Um, gets to go to the James Beard Foundation house and cook. That's the prize. No money, just an honor and an accolade. And, right. and, and David is a very humble chef. He reminds me so much of Orr's, it's not even funny. But he needs votes. So please go out and vote for his eculent burger. And in fact, we have that uh, link right here on the, uh, on the videos you watch. And for those who may not be foodies who don't know about James Beard, just compare it to in the food world, it's the Oscars Correct. and the Super Bowl combined. I mean, it's, a, it's yeah. a big deal to be in any type of James Beard work. Let's go back to where this, in many ways for you, that first prize that you got was it cream cheese you said <laughs> well <laughs> talk about talk about that how did that come about that contest you entered and like well, you said you won 250 bucks and thought it was the grandest thing in the world well i was at united space alliance and it was my turn to bring in the birthday cake of the month and i had there was two women that were celebrating their birthday and one didn't like dark chocolate and i said well how about if i use white chocolate would that be okay and they said, yeah, as long as you use strawberries with it. I said, okay, I can do that. So I brought in this white chocolate cream cheese cake. And somebody who had had a piece of it said, oh, my God, Nancy, this, this cake is to die for. You ought to enter it in the, the Paula Deen, Real Women of Philadelphia, cook-off. So I did. It didn't win, but I won with an appetizer. Um, and that's become one of my signature dishes as well. But the cake has has been on demand for seven years now and it's it's killer and then it led me to competitive cooking and and you've done a lot of that i've done a lot i've won 60 pounds of blue cheese i've won 50 pounds of nutella i've won cooking equipment i've won money i've won <laughs> what's the one of the other odd things that i've won i've won i've won the best lamb contest the best vegetable uh, uh, vegetarian contest the best chocolate contest wow. I've got a whole bunch of them but you know, you've, but, but remember guys a cook is only as good as their last dish and that's, that's what true. people remember is sure. your last dish you know um, <clears throat> there are a lot of chefs out there that don't do this they stay in their kitchen they keep their heads down and that's what they want to do I just decided to go a different route there's so many opportunities for, for chefs who go through culinary to find themselves either in a specialty area or in a totally different aspect of the culinary world. Food styling, blogging, food critic. Um, it's just unbelievable. Photography. I didn't know that I could take such good photos of my food until <laughs> I came to Galveston College. 
and I just practiced at it, and I got better and better and better. And you had to, you had to learn. It's all about the presentation yeah. in many different ways, isn't yeah. it? That oh, to do absolutely. that. Absolutely. We eat with our eyes first, and we taste second. So I mean, if it doesn't look good, you're probably not going to pick up the fork and bite into it. Uh, but um, okay, we got our carcasse done. Now let's get our mousse going because it's, it's, it needs to go in the um, oven. What we're going to do is pat these, these dry, make sure they're real dry, okay. and then we're going to take these shrimp that have been peeled and deveined, and we saved our peelings. Yes, we did. Yeah, that was something here that, I, that a lot of people might not realize. You save the peelings because you're going to put it into the, the sauce, sauce layer. Okay. It adds the right flavor to it. Okay. Uh, let's let's clean up behind ourselves. You know, part of responsible cooking is keeping a clean kitchen. Sure, sure. So we want. Oh well, then I fail at that every <laughs> single time. Uh. Yeah. But I, you know, I've done I've I've done the World Food Championship. I've done Food Network now. Um, who knows what's next? Talk about no. speaking of food network. Let's talk about Cutthroat Kitchen. Yes. The uh, which is the first of the TV shows you got on. How did that come about? And that 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 first time. Okay. Well, and keep going. Don't don't hold up for me. I'll stand back. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going. Um, let me get my blender, my processor out up, up here if I can. Okay. Okay, Sue. <laughs> Each one of these are different. We got it. Okay. We're gonna drop about half of these shrimp in here. And we're going to drop all the scallops in here. These are actually little sea scallops. You don't have to buy the big expensive ones because you're going to blend this. So why waste expensive ingredients when it's going to end up as a um, puree? That's a good point too because you make a point uh, in a lot of your recipes is this is the you can st you can do this no matter who you are correct. type of approach, correct? You can just go to this is about going to your local grocery store, HEB, wherever, Kroger, wherever, and finding these items, right? You know, being a home cook for so many years um, has taught me a lot of, of home cook techniques and saving money. Because you got to put food on the table for a family. And I don't care if your family is two or four or six or eight, but I came from, from a family of 11. So, you know, it was always, it's always a task to, to make your money go as far as you can when it comes to food. And. Now comes the loud part, folks. Bear with us. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to drop one whole egg in there. While it's going, let's get this blended just a little bit. We're going to blend this till it's smooth. Take a spatula and scrape it down. Okay. Which way, guys? You turn it for me. Okay. <laughs> Just scrape it down and then we'll pulse it one more time. Because it's, it's, it's thick, so we've got to do, uh, we're going to add another egg to it. Would you get a small bowl and let's beat this little egg right here to death? <laughs> Oscar and Yark are getting plenty of extra credit here today. Uh, So, when you when you are prepping out something like this and, and making this dish, uh, obviously we're delaying you uh, in, in this. How long would it take from start to finish if you're just doing this and focusing on it? This is a really quick recipe. Uh, cook time is 20 minutes. Prep time is probably another 15 if you if you focus on it and not talk. <laughs> right, right. That's it. Um, let's put this in here. Scrape that down in there with the spatula, and then we're going to add the egg in. We're going to fold that egg in. Like that. Uh huh. While he's doing that, let's go ahead and go back to what I'd asked you about earlier. 
uh, the Cutthroat Kitchen, that first phone call. Tell about how that came about. Well, actually, I had gone online and auditioned, cast, uh, filled out an application to audition for CNBC's restaurant startup. And I wanted to do a brick and mortar, which is a restaurant uh, front for a charcuterie. I wanted to do sausage and cheeses and salamis and bolognese and, in, in, in essence, a, 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 a high-end deli shop. You know, right. Galveston County doesn't have one. Right. And I, I wanted to cite one here. So I went through all the auditions. They loved me. They, they thought I looked good on camera. They thought I had a good concept, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Took it off to the executive producers and they came back and said, Nancy, we just did one six months ago. It's too close. Oh. Too close together. We, we'll put you on back burner for season two. Uh, if you're interested, we can try casting you again. But in the meantime, Cutthro Kitchen is casting. Are you interested? And I went, uh-huh. <laughs> That's how you end up on the Food Network. That's it. Right time, right place. Right, for being in the right. You know? So what was maybe disappointing and a semi-rejection at right. the beginning turns out to be the door opening up, which another is another great life lesson. Right. It? So okay. now we're mixing in one more egg here, right? One more egg. And then we're going to, I'm going to let you whip it. Um, we're going to put it in some buttered ramekins. And would you make sure that that water is still hot that yes. the concasse came out of? So when you got on the show, was obviously you had not done anything like that before. What was that like? Oh, uh, I've always said that you know some of the the historic French chefs are my favorite chefs, but on TV, Alton Brown is without a doubt my favorite, favorite, favorite celebrity chef. He doesn't even call himself a chef, but. He, he's magical, you know, he's so spontaneous, he's so funny, uh, he's brilliant, an absolute genius, and... Uh, a bit uh, quirky. Yeah, a little quirky, but <laughs> that's Alton, you know, yeah. you take people at face value and that's his face. So, um, um, it was a hoot, needless to say it was a hoot. It was a, a grandma episode, it was two chefs against two home cooks in the cast of four. And I, I ended up getting five of the eight sabotages and survived to win. You know, so it, 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 was, it, it was a lot. In fact, uh, you're looking at right now her Facebook posting from when she won it because she was quite a happy person uh, uh, from, that, uh, yeah. from, from that episode. But that opened up a whole lot more doors for you. It did. Um, and talk about just briefly what, what, what came up after that. Um, a year later, I get a phone call from the casting people at Cutthroat Kitchen and said, we'd like to bring you back, bring you back since you're one of the winners. We're going to do a time warp tournament. Would you make sure it's even? Yeah. A uh, time warp tournament and it's, I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. Oh, I'm That's sorry. Right. Hey, hey. <laughs> It's not a good. It's not a good cooking expedition and exhibition unless you go ahead and get you the taste a little bit off your shirt, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was it was going to be a salute to the '60s, '70s, '80s, and '90s, and we want to put you in the '60s. Well, that was my generation. You know, I love the '60s. I graduated high school '69, um, and it was treacherous. I mean, it was probably worse than the grandma episode. Uh, uh, I came in second. And I mean that was I'm, tough. I, I mean, you they put you inside, put you inside a small yellow submarine with two other chefs. Right with yeah with two other people, and then you also the Bay of Pigs thing, oh. which I still don't understand. It's all, all these pigs uh, in a floating tub of some sort that uh, that you guys had to work around with. Because the, those who may not have seen the show, Cutthroat Kitchen, basically. <laughs> You're, you're trying to prepare a meal, but they're throwing everything they can at you, and, you're, and the people you're competing against put up money so they can take, try to take you out. That's the whole yeah, idea. The, the, the yellow submarine was pretty bad, but the Bay of Pigs was the worst thing I think I've ever in my life had to experience because I couldn't use electricity. Um, it's kind forgot, of dangerous. Right? I, caught, I forgot the eggs, and uh, I, ha I was charged to make my dessert, which was a homestyle banana pudding. Well, this girl can make a southern banana pudding. 
but you don't do it without eggs. All right. <laughs> Well, it's easy to see <laughs> something like that when you're getting distracted. Yeah. It gets messed yeah. up. Cause I remember you saying, I forgot the eggs. I yeah. forgot the yeah. eggs. So there was no recovery after yeah. that. Yeah, well, yeah, I came close. It came down to, do you want a soupy banana pudding or you want a stiff banana pudding? Mine looked gorgeous. His looked like a mess, but but he won. So, <laughs> That's it. Case of Raw, you know, it was still a, a wonderful experience. What's going on? What's Oscar doing here right now? Okay, he's pouring in some hot waters halfway up uh, the height of the ramekins, and we're going to put this in a 350 degree oven and cook it for about 20 minutes. And we've got a timer, I believe, I saw. Yes. Okay, that's, yes, yeah. A little bit more, just a little bit more. And I think we need a little bit more of this in here. In, in fact, while that's in the oven, we'll be talking about uh, going on Food Network Star because this is going to be, you know it. I know you can't talk much about uh, the details of it, but just the overall experience, we'll talk about that here in uh, just a bit. But this, this is looking very good, folks. Okay. I wish you could be here with us to take a look at this. Okay, now very easily, we're gonna move this to the oven that's preheated. Uh, thank you, Paul. <laughs> and we're gonna cook it for 20 minutes, and they should be nice and fluffy, look like little I call them mousselins that are flan if, if you want to equate it to something that you might recognize in everyday life. And the reason for covering it with foil? You want the steam to stay in and cook it as this water gets hotter. And uh, we're going to cut a couple of slits in it so the steam can also escape. <laughs> right. <laughs> if not, then you have a... Uh... A steam cooker that can blow the top. Yep. I wish I had a nickel for every one of these I made at Moody Gardens with uh, creme brulees. <laughs> Remember that? Chef Paul also worked at Moody Gardens. Okay. Now, we'll open the, the, let's go open it. It's not hot. We got the timer going, right? We hit start. Now it's time to make a sauce. And the sauce, what will all be included in the sauce that you're going to be making here? We're going to take the um, seashells, the uh, shrimp shells that came off of the uh, shrimp tails. Right there. And let me let me refer to my recipe. <laughs> Every good chef still has the recipe handy, Absolutely. right? I mean, that's how it's supposed to work out. Okay. Done that, done that. <laughs> the checklist. Done that. That's, it's a good lesson to be learned there. While the flans bake. <laughs> <laughs> that she does her famous presentation. Uh, we're going to prepare the sauce. In a heavy skillet, we're going to take the olive oil, which is one tablespoon. And what are we going to do with And uh, This is a tablespoon. This is a tablespoon. You eyeball it on your measurements most of the time? That's the way I learned to cook. I didn't. But, you know, when I have a recipe, I try to stay true to it. So, um, they don't do that. In, it's it's really a guesstimate, right? <laughs> it's right. not the, let's have the exact. And half of the remaining butter. So that's two tablespoons. Talking about being a home chef and, and, and do that. Talk about probably your greatest guinea pig uh, is your husband, oh. <laughs> right? He's Talk about a man who's led a, a treasured life uh, hanging my out with you. Biggest supporter, you know. Um, when that starts to foam, we're going to add the shells and stir them. Let that butter melt first, though. And you have a spatula or a tong. Thank you. I got my shoe chefs working for me. Love it. Oscar and Eric are doing a good job with us here today, guys. And we're gonna let these shells cook for about five minutes until they feel kind of crispy. They're gonna turn pink, of course, and they're gonna get crispy. Then we're gonna remove them with a slotted spoon. <laughs> Make sure we have the slotted spoon around here, too. We had one. Where did we go with it? Oh, just a regular uh, gotcha. spoon with holes in it, yeah. Um, Talk about though, you said you, he's been your greatest supporter, but your husband stuck with you through everything. All the corporate jobs, and then this adventure, 
I, did he think at first, well, Nancy's retiring now, I got her home all the time, or he was he encouraging to get out of the house? Well, you know, we didn't know what we were going to do uh, with the rest of our lives, because he also retired about the same time. He retired from the city of Galveston, um, and um, he started writing. So he can ride anywhere. So we didn't know if we were going to travel. We just didn't, we hadn't decided. He's written two novels so far. Um, but he's my biggest supporter, my favorite tester, because he's very honest. And he said, I know you may not want to hear this, but I think you need to do this. I think you need to do that. And I don't think this looks good. So, <laughs> you know, so he's very honest. He's never eaten so much cream cheese in all of his life. He's, he, he used to tell me all the time, when we were growing up, cream cheese was a delicacy. You got it once a year, Christmas time or Thanksgiving, and it went in to either some dip or some dessert. Right. I had cream cheese out the refrigerator overflowing. It was just ridiculous. But um, he, I don't know that he expected me to retire because I'm, um, I tell my daughter all the time that I have too much energy to retire, and I do. I, I, I've told people all my life when I grow up I'm going to be 95. So. <laughs> That's right. So I was never going to be one that would sit on the couch and just waste the rest of my life away. And uh, it just took that one ad in the paper, and that was it. And opened the doors up. And opened the doors. And you, you call yourself the Nana Chef. I do. And that's because you got the grandbabies. Talk I about have that. One, I have eight grandbabies. I have an extended family. Jim and I are, uh, have a union of two kids from his first marriage and two kids from my first marriage. And then we share eight grandbabies together. They're all blessings. And um, turn that down just a little bit. Um, smelling a little hot. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and take the shells out if we could. Don't lose too much of the uh, butter, okay? Um, Folks, if you can smell us like we are right now, but you can just smell the richness mm -hmm. going on. But go ahead, talk about the grandkids. Uh, I have. Um, Three grandsons and five granddaughters. I have one special need grandson that has Down syndrome, and uh, he's just a jewel. He's almost a genius. He, he's like one of those savants. Yeah. He can tell you every planet, how many moons, and how many what the stars are. I don't know them all, even though I work for the space program. <laughs> you know, and he reads like I'll get out. And um, you know, we've had a. a a bunch of cheerleaders and a bunch, a bunch of dancers in our family. We have an athlete in our family now that's coming up through the high school. Uh, they're in local schools, they're in private schools, and um, once they get their car, we never see them again. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even they get their wheels are gone. Right. You know, so we've got several that don't come to see Nana and Papa and Big Daddy as much as they should. So, hello! <laughs> yeah, the message out. We'll put your number at the bottom so they don't forget it there. All right, let's, uh, and they are, as I said, you, 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 you talk about them all the time. It's kind of, it is your brand, Nana Chef. Uh, and I take it then, too, is, is, is you're, they, they beg you to cook something for them when they come over they and visit, their, do they? Yeah, they do, TJ. They have their favorites. I try to use some time with them every chance I get to teach them how to, to cook something. You know, um, okay, we're gonna add, we're gonna add um, the shallots and the fennel seed and the garlic. Nancy, why don't you come on around over here as you sure. guys are doing that. Okay. Not the garlic yet, though. Let's let the shallots get a little. Yeah. I'm gonna soften those for about three minutes, okay? Okay. So you said now that each of the grandkids have their own kind of favorite dish from you? Yeah, uh, unfortunately I have uh, a stepdaughter and a daughter-in-law that don't cook. Can't boil water. And uh, that's their thing, okay? They have other things going on in their life. And to each his own, you know? And you may see one of them on Worst Cook in America. Oh, 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 hey, hey, a promo for another, from the family, making a, making a family thing now. We'll know so, soon. Yeah, yeah. We'll know soon. But um, one comes from an Italian family that the mother just cooks unbelievably, and right. Virginia can't cook anything. Uh, she does Blue Apron and those other box dinners. Right, yeah, right. That's okay. She's getting by, you know. But, um, 
my point of view is that even though I'm a great cook, we all have a responsibility to our children and our grandchildren to teach them how to cook. They need to be able to feed themselves other than to drive through fast food or buy it out of the frozen food section. You know, we've raised this generation of convenient food kids and grandkids. And that's that's you know, a big we thing need with to you. Turn to the table. You know, and you know, and all of us come from different backgrounds, different roots, different ethnicities. Uh, ethnic, you, you know that word. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah. Ethnic different, makeup. Different yeah. races, whatever. You know, we all have heritage cooking in our in our roots. And you, the first person that teaches anybody how to do anything is either grandma or mom. Right. You know. Oh. And Lord, the recipes that we're losing to posterity because they're not being inherited, they're not being shared, and they're not being utilized. Because a lot of them are always in grandma yeah. or mom's mind, right. and then and right. then continues on okay, from there. Why don't you go ahead and put the, the is that the uh, yes. yeah? Please put that in there. Okay. Okay, and we got the garlic in there yeah, too. The garlic. Now we're going to deglaze. I'm going to use some uh, just, just just your favorite dry white wine. It needs to be dry. Should be a dry. I've made it with sweet and it just changes the sauce too much. Okay. okay. Ready? Okay. Now we're going to add the tomato paste. Ready? Tomato paste. And would you do me a favor? You know how to shop the chef and on basil? Okay. Would you take some of that basil and get me about three tablespoons chef and on? Chef and on is cutting the basil after you roll it up and chop it. You can use it, my knife or their knife, whatever. Okay. talk about we talked briefly but the coming on Food Network start <coughs> this being as big of a show as it is of the competition shows that they, that, yeah. that they have uh, it is so high profile many of the chefs we see out in the world now that are that are kind of the up-and-comers right. many of them were on the show at some point too right um, for you and I know you can't get into details on a whole lot but what's been the experience like being a part of that so far I can't buy this kind of publicity. You know that, TJ, whether I win or lose, and that's to be yet determined. It's the chance of a lifetime. I've met some wonderful foodies, uh, the entire cast. And uh, on, the, on the premiere, there'll be 13 of us instead of 12, because there's a comeback person. One of the finalists that didn't win last year or a previous season has an opportunity to fight their way in to get that 13th spot. So you'll get to see who that is on Sunday night as well as introduce the entire cast, the other 12. And they're all excellent cooks. We, and, but ironically, all but three of them are from the South. Does that tell it, you it, Well, and that's, the, I was about to ask because that's the one thing we start seeing. Southern cooking is what's taking over <laughs> the whole country, is it right. not? But the, the, the experience of, of the camaraderie you've, you've built with folks uh, and, and all, you, is there anything without getting any details or any of the competition that you've taken away from that so far? Well, it's really, really important that not only that you can cook, but that you have a good camera presence and a good personality and um, an interesting story. You know, you gotta be able to relate to people. People have to be able to relate to you, find something in you that's interesting or who's gonna watch your show. Um, and there's some really good characters. Because in, there's that's some really the, good characters in this cast. That's the goal of this, yes. is, is to ultimately, the winner goes on, has his or her own show. Correct. Uh, and <laughs> as we say, it's a, it's a grand audition for a new season of something on, on the Food Network of what they want to be able to promote. Right. Um, it's so, how, how intense is that competition, though? 
as, as you folks are going at it? It's very intense and uh, you know without getting into too much detail um, I can tell you when we cook at home or when we cook in a restaurant we know where everything's at. We know where each pantry's at, what's in each pantry. We know what supplies we have on hand. We know where all of our appliances are. We know how the kitchen is laid out. We know, we know how to turn on our stove. We know how to, to do everything and it's all in arm's reach. But when you walk into a foreign kitchen and try and cook, things don't work as right. well, you know? And you got 12 people scammering for the same protein. Well, they didn't all ask for the same protein. But, <laughs> you know, as an example, I wanted scallops. They disappeared out of the pantry. There was no scallops to be had. I wanted shrimp. There was no scallops to, uh, shrimp to be had. You know, so. You have to think on your feet, really. You know, they're unlike what you would normally do in a kitchen to say, right. all right, here's what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to prepare tonight. If something's gone, you've got to make do and, and move on to something else. Can you get me one more bowl? Thank you. I'm well, uh, looking for my strainer. My we had it here. <laughs> We've, oh. oh, there it is, with there the shells go. in it. Sorry. <laughs> Good thing. Always know where your stuff is in the kitchen. Yep. Okay, what we're going to do is pour this in here and strain it. You want to come around here or you want to do it there? Okay, very good. Oh, again, folks, if you could be here and smell this. All, all the folks off camera, too, are just enjoying themselves right now with the aromas. If you don't have one of these folks, go get one. This is an immersion blender. You can buy them all day long at Targets or wherever your favorite uh, kitchen supply store is or online, whatever you, whatever you decide. Uh, mushroom blenders are fabulous. I'm going to make this smooth because I don't want to lose this good ingredients. Maybe. She's a lot better. You're a lot better at me. I would have had it splashed all over the place. Well, you see, I'm standing back. I right. I, I noticed you kind of packed up a little bit. I don't have on an apron, and I should have on an apron. You know, my grandmother used to get up in the morning, put her clothes on, and the first thing she went over her clothes was her apron. <laughs> right. That was her day, right? Stop doing that. You know? We became a wash and wear generation. And... Uh, now I have a collection of aprons. <laughs> but do you think I thought to bring one? No. Well, for our purposes, this works out good. Okay. Okay, now we're going to put it back in the, in the skillet. It's nice and pureed. We're not going to have to strain it. I don't want to lose all that good stuff. I've made it both ways. I find this one to be better. So by doing it that way, you're able to keep basically all the ingredients in place and not press it through and lose anything, right? right? Not just getting the essence. Now we're going to add, we're almost ready to pull it out the oven. We got about three minutes left on the oven. You pour this in when I tell you. And then we're going to top it off with some sherry to make this very, very rich. Crab meat ready. Going back to the show here, uh, did, when you now this will be your third television show to do, do you have a more of an appreciation for what you see on there when you see hosts yes. of the show and what yes. it takes to put something together? You know, it's a huge team. You know the old saying, it takes a village to raise a child. <laughs> It takes a village to put on a cooking show. Um, you know, they have executive chefs at the Food Network who do nothing but buy ingredients and stock the pantry. It's just phenomenal what all goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. Production teams and professional photographers and wardrobe and makeup. and It's just unbelievable what goes on, you know. And, yes, when you see... Uh, your favorite cooking chef on the Food Network or anywhere else? No, they, 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 they have a lot on their plate to get through a production. Now, they probably have the opportunity to do redos and right. edit out and stuff, but 
it's still it's still hard to get it all accomplished. Which, by the way, we should point out to here, Nancy doesn't get that per, get that benefit here. We're going straight through as if this was live. So there there's been no redos or retakes over no, here. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is this is this is going to be the great part of this is uh, when it's all done. Be as if you were hanging out with Nancy in her kitchen uh, to get this done. Every you talk about seeing your favorite chef. Uh, my in my personal privilege, I got to ask because I'm a big Bobby Flay fan. What what's he like in in real life? He's very very um, personable, very open and honest. Okay, would you pour that uh, the remaining six ounces of heavy cream in there? Turn the fire down low. Smooth that around. This is my bis sauce. And then I'm going to have to take the spatula away from you because I don't want my crab meat broken up. And we want it left in lumps as much as we can get it. And how many minutes, seconds, do we have left on the uh, baking aspect of the recipe? 50 seconds. 50 seconds. A tasting spoon for Yeah. Would right. you get a tasting spoon? So Bobby Flay, very personable? Not yeah, thin. very knowledgeable. Oh, hit my off button. Thank you. What happens when we have the cell phones going? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, start off again. You said very knowledgeable Bobby Flay. Uh, well, you know, I call him the grilling expert, but he's so much more than that. Um, um, and Giada, of course, is the Italian queen. Right. And she will definitely correct you if you mispronounce something. She'll make no qualms about it. That's I, it. I think that's her calling card. What I've done is thrown my um, lump crab meat in, and I'm just gently coating it. I don't want to break up these lumps because I want each bite to have the sauce and the crab meat when we top those uh, flans with it. In fact, let's tilt that a little bit to the camera if you can so folks can see the coloration that's in there now. And again, if you could get the aroma, folks, it would it's okay. something else. We're ready to pull the flans out. Okay. And if we've done our job right by interpreting the recipe correctly, what we should find under here. I don't think they're quite done. Let me say that. You need to leave them in there a little bit longer. No, they're done. They're done. They're springy. They've separated from the sides. We don't want to overcook them because then they'll become tough. Okay? Okay, it's plating time. Before we plate up, let me just, yeah, one, thank you for for doing this here today. Good, good luck to you. Thank it's you. Uh, Food Network Star, June 4th, debuts on the Food Network. Check your local listings for it, and, uh, and we'll be following you, hopefully, all the way to the end uh, out there. What's the kind of the final message you have for folks because you're such an inspirational story. You are a great story. Oh, thank you. Um, if you find yourself in a job that you don't like, then you're in the wrong business. Because you should love what you do for a living. Um, figure out what it is that, you, that turns your heart into a passion and sets your soul on fire. And go for it. Don't sit in, in misery. Life's too short to be miserable at what you do for a living. Um, I, seven years ago, if you'd have told me that this is what I'd be doing for a living, I'd have said, you're crazy. You know, but I saw an opportunity to go and learn how to be better as a home cook, not expecting to do any of the rest. I took the rest, I went back to school, put my life on hold for a couple of years because I had to pull an internship on top of that. And um, great opportunity when it's offered to you. Never say no. Always at least check it out. You know, And it's never too late. And it's, you're never too young to start thinking about your future. Not all of us have to be rocket science. You know, not all of us have to end up as a secretary. Not all of us have to be line cooks. We can be instructors or we can be production people that follow foodies or food photographers. Find something that excites you. It doesn't even have to be around food. Just find what it is that you're meant to be at and do it. Okay, and the chives. Let's break a little chives on top and he needs a spoon or a fork or something. Get that a second. Before we before we go and try this great this great dish, again, Nancy, thank you. 
Yark, Oscar, thank you gentlemen for being with us. And Chef Paul, the head, oh thanks for the spoon, <laughs> got the fork. Uh, Chef Paul, the head of the Culinary Arts Program at Galveston College. And thank you to Galveston College, uh, celebrating 50 years and thank you for having us uh, here today for this. We're looking forward to it. And now, Proud to be the, best, the best part the best part of uh, my job uh, comes up here now. Now you get to live like Jim does. This is going to be <laughs> like your husband Jim. <laughs> Mm. Oh yeah. Trust me, folks. Here you can have it. <laughs> I'm gonna take the plate. We're gonna serve up everyone else. Nancy, thanks again. Thank you. And uh, we'll have the full episode uh, of this uh, interview on our YouTube channel, and we'll have our segments obviously here on I-45 now. Have yourself a good one, folks.